Kim Show. Well, as you can see, I love watching Cooking with Tittle, and I'm so glad you love watching too. Because we've got a new email address. That's right. It's Tittle in the middle at live, L-I-V-E dot com. So I do hope you will email your Tittle. I've got some great green things going on for this year and some healthy treats. Bon appetit, let's eat each and every Thursday at 7 p.m. and Fridays at 2 p.m. right here on Channel 19. And now, back to the show. Hey. in the middle. Want to have some fun? Welcome to the LaDonna Tittle TV radio show. Wow. Look at our hands. <laughs> Daughter can survive. Okay, so I, I can just about take anything and make some kind of food product out of What you got there, Brian? A little watermelon. What? Little, little baby. Uh, this one may get large enough to actually eat. We don't know. So, yet, but have you get. ever grown watermelons before? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, we have. Um, like I say, we, due to the bad weather and everything that we were having in Chicago and what have you this year, we just got started late and we just have not had a real opportunity to come out here and and clean the way that we probably should. Well, uh, have you? are you like into that. the Farmer's Almanac? Uh, yes. They said <laughs> we're going to have a worse winter this year than we did in 2013. Yeah, you know what? I believe that. I believe that because the, the, the season has just been... 2014 was horrible this winter. This summer has just been... Uh, Crazy. It's just been a wreck. Okay, and now to the Grape House. Wreck. I call this the grape house because, as you can see, grapes have taken over. This. Yes. But, but usually what you will find is that usually the grapes themselves will be growing under. They, they won't be growing out in the open. Okay. But they'll, instead, Let's they'll be that. growing under. This will probably be a good place to stop picking these grapes. Okay. Because we do need some grapes if we're going to be doing this wild grape Well, you salad. do the picking. <laughs> and just pull them straight off. These are the wild grape vines. And that's what we the have, wild the wild grapes. grapes. That's what we're making the jelly out of today. But those those grapes right there will just take over everything. Wow. They will just take over everything. As you can see, they've taken over that tree. Uh, they're, they're climbing this tree over here. And, and I mean, uh, just all over the place. You can look around and you can just, once you can recognize the uh, the leaves, you can see them. And, and some of them, last year, they were even climbing one of these tall trees. Oh, wow, they grow. Yeah. We'll actually be able to come up with enough eventually that we'll be able to make the jelly out of. Well, I guess we better get busy picking, huh? We better get busy picking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we better get busy picking. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the show. How are I'm you? with Chef Urban Survivor, also known as Brian Kenner. And I'm so happy to have him on the show today because it's one of those shows that I have been just longing to do, and that is to show the art of canning and preserving. And Brian is going to show us this just that. Jellies, jams, pickles, peppers, mm -hmm. everything. 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 You for can preserve you can preserve everything from chicken all the way down to a berry. You can you can wow. anything. Good thing. And what do you call it? The urban what? 
the urban survivor. Urban survivor. I, I am the urban survivor. All there right. There you go. I, I can just about take anything and make some kind of food product out of it. Wild grapes are indigenous to most of the Northern America. Is North that right? America, exactly. You can just about find them in Chicago. As a matter of fact, I have a small little um, area in my yard in Chicago where they also grow. Is that right? Yes. I notice how they grow around the house mm -hmm. in the yard. And when they said that God made grapes to grow anywhere, he really meant it. Absolutely. They just grow. They, I mean, and it's so it gets so bad with us. If I didn't, if I wasn't really paying attention to it, if I wasn't like cutting them back and what have you, the place that we have in Indiana probably would have taken that over. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I saw the little hut, right? Yeah, okay, the right, right. I call that the grape the house. house. Exactly. The grape yeah, house. I call that the grape house now because <laughs> it, they've been taken. It's been taken over by the grapes. Brian Kenner today is my special guest and he is going to show us the craft of canning and preserving for urban survival. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, well, I'm going to show you a piece of it anyway because it, it goes far and it reaches Dude. far and wide, right? Okay, but give us what, a kindergarten version, you know? <laughs> okay. Everybody today is four years old, so we really want to understand <laughs> complicated right. method of canning and preserving. Uh, what we're going to do today, uh, it probably be the best way to do it, is, is, is to start off with something that's not really simple, but something that you can basically stick to the same recipe time and time again. And that doesn't matter if it's jelly or jam. It, it well, well, we'll make jelly is, is what I was referring to exactly. We'll make jelly today. Okay. okay? Uh, jam is a different process. Jam is where you use the actual meat from the from the fruit oh, okay. in order to make the the sweetness and 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 to make the ja the jam itself oh, okay. without you know uh, getting getting myself caught up into a, a war of words <laughs> right there. But well, people uh, will but, be calling right. Us. <laughs> but okay. But but the difference is jelly. You don't use the actual meat of the berries, oh, okay. okay, or or of the fruit, whatever it may be, because you can just about make jellies, jams, almost out of anything. Oh. Okay. okay. You can even make y yes. You can even make jelly out of root beer. Oh, really? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, you can make jelly almost and, out of anything. And there's something that you do with apple juice. What apple juice, that? I make apple jelly. With, apple with jelly. Apple okay. jelly. Okay, so there is a difference and it is, between and jam it is, and jelly. And it is fantastic. Yes, the, the, you use the juice to make jelly. You use the actual meat and the juice to make jam. Okay, do we have that? We have that. We're... we're Okay. And and that's the difference. So you, you I have to pick all of these little berries off. Yes. I'm going to be working fast cuz you know our show because is only 30 minutes. Right, because <laughs> one of the situations that you run into here is that you get that 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 um, the stem. Okay. You want to separate the berries or or the grapes themselves from so. the stems because these are wild grapes and and as you can see they're much smaller than regular grapes. Much yeah, they smaller. look like champagne grapes almost. They're yeah, and, and, grapes and these are good. and these are actually uh, mature. Okay. These are actually mature, and that's as large as they will get. So I understand that after we have washed our hands. First thing, wash your hands, which then, we have already done. But you know what? I'm going to even take my ring off. How about that? Put that in my little pocket here. To to pick the to separate the grapes from the stems exactly okay, because so what what will happen here now is is oh, that, I see. that they oh, will stain, stain as you can see it'll stain your clothes stain your hands or what have you and you'll be walking around for a few days not able to uh, well. so back in the day when they actually would mash the grapes with their feet. <laughs> They walk feet. around stained feet. feet. Exactly. <laughs> Their feet would yes. be red. They walk around with stained feet. There's That's no way to go around that. Because I must say, one of my favorite shows is I Love Lucy when her and Myrtle Absolutely. did the grapes. Yeah. And they were I remember that one. Stomping the grapes. That was one of the classics. And we're going to put the grapes in our pot. 
right. Ooh, that was a heavy. And, little and you break. gotta go one at a time. One, one at a time. Or not really. How many? However many you can pick at so one time. This now is, some of these are still green, uh -huh. but they won't hurt anything. Oh really? No, they okay. won't hurt anything uh, because the majority of them are, have reached full ripeness and what have you. They, they would just be probably just a little bit bitter. The oh, green yeah. ones, the, well, actually, uh, I tasted one. Right, the, the 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 blue ones themselves, the ones that are totally mature, those are also uh, quite bitter. Oh, that, that's a good when question. You, Which one is mature? So high, even though they're green and purple, they're okay. Right. That's a little bad. Color. Right. Once once the vine itself has reached maturity. Um, the rest of them will be all right. Also, you can always cook those in, or you can separate the greens from from the blue ones. Those that have reached full maturity. My, me myself, I use them all together. I noticed that we have a big old pot of boiling water over there for the jars because they have to be sterilized, right? Yes. Yes, okay. they do. Yes, the jars have to be sterilized, and you always want to make sure that you boil. The jars. Oh, okay. Boiling okay, not the jars. not rinse them out, not just wash them out or what have you. The only thing that's going to really sterilize those containers is is a good boil. And you also help your lovely wife Audrey. What's um, the name of her show? She she's a peach. She's a peach. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she's not a grape. She, she, she's a peach. She's not a grape. Yes. Yeah, she, she, she she's, she's a, a peach. peach. Yeah. She's a peach. Uh, she does her show. The name of her show is Today with Audrey K. Oh, Today with Audrey K. And she uh, it's a talk show format, and she she has a lot of guests on there. She is just a a wonder of mankind right there. She is beautiful. Yeah, she she is a peach. Thank you, Audrey, for helping us crew today. And in a moment, folks, we're going to have a big old pan of grapes, too, because Audrey's busy picking us grapes. This is a fun thing. Yeah. Invite the girls over, have a conversation. Yeah, well, like my grandkids, we, we get Oh, the, yeah? Yeah. Oh, this is great for kids, too. We get, we get the kids over, and um, we, have, we have a ball. I mean, we just, we just love it. Well, all right, then. Wow. Look at our hands. <laughs> this is why I tell people use surgical gloves or some kind of some kind of rubber gloves to do this because it will stain your hands and these stains don't go away overnight either. And through the magic of television, we actually pip Thank you, Audrey. That's his beautiful wife. <laughs> So we had a little help. So now I want to get the stems out, right? Yeah, but well, most of the stems we have separated them already, and, mm -hmm. and whatever remains in it really won't be a big deal. But this is what we ended up coming up with. Yeah. Oh, and and, I have and this is just more. beautiful. These these grapes here just in in great condition. In, in so how long great does it take? Great condi condition, correct. <laughs> so how long does it take them to grow like that? Uh, well, they start growing, uh, let's say, the beginning of the summer, probably in early June or okay. something like that, and they finally ripen uh, right around the end of July, middle of August. Oh, okay. Something like that. Okay, because mm -hmm. we were waiting to shoot the show, and I'm right. like, the grapes are not done the yet. The grapes are not done. I'm like, should we wait another week? And, oh, no, the grapes will be rotten then. And, and then, the, yeah, dry and, up. And, the, and the thing about it, you just touched on something there also, because the thing about that is if you don't catch them within that window, it's probably a week and a half, two-week window. If you don't catch them within that window, they will go bad on you. So they, they uh, Audrey was reminding me that I was saying berries, but these are grapes. grapes. These are actual <laughs> grapes. Grapes. As small as they are, these are called wild grapes. Wild grapes. Ooh, they look so pretty. They're a little bit more tart. You, you really can't eat them. Well, you can. They it were tart. On, it depends, I did taste it, them. It, it depends on your taste. Um, you, you can eat them if you want individually or what have you, but they're better for grapes. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, they're better for jellies or, or better for uh, jams, Jam. something like okay. that. Okay, or so, even syrup. You can make syrup out of these also. You can make a wild grape syrup out of these also. 
All right. And, and well, we'll get around to that. I was about to talk about the leaves of, of the of the of the bush. Oh, we you uh, can of do the vine, with right? The vine? There are vines, right? That you can do something with the leaves also, oh, yeah. and we'll talk about the great leaves. They have them like they wrap things. You can in them. absolutely me absolutely. You can you can wrap you can wrap uh, you can make uh, rice meat whatever. That's you can right. wrap them and and you can. Uh, prepare food and, and the leaves also, and it's fantastic. Brian, thank you for letting me help you do that. Now the rest is up to you, because okay. we got to boil some jars. Yes. And sterilize the jars. Talk and, and about that method. It's very important that you sterilize these jars, let me tell you. Uh, when, whenever you're doing any kind of canning, whenever you're doing any kind of, it could be jellies, preserves, anything like that is vitally important that you um, make sure that those uh, are sterilized in the best way. To make sure that they're sterilized, as I was saying before, washing them may be a good thing, but that is not the best thing. The best thing to do in order to sterilize them is use a, a, a canner. Okay, show us. Um, I have a homemade canner here. Uh, it's, it's large enough to hold the jars and what have you, but anyway, I make sure that those jars are covered. This is a big stock pot, about what, yes. eight ounce stock pot? Uh, you gotta have something to immerse the jars in. Absolutely, okay. right. You have to, and, and they have to be covered at least two inches. Okay, over, well, let's over show the top, what we're okay? doing. There you but go. But I got grape hands. <laughs> You want gloves? You got gloves. <laughs> now the gloves come off, and we are jamming that jelly. Ooh. Bon appetit. Let's eat. You're cooking with Tittle and my friend Brian. All right. You know what? <laughs> Another thing that we want to do now, we want to make sure that these are going to stay sterilized. We want to make sure also that they're going to seal correctly. Okay. So what we want to do is place these back in the boiler. Sure, that's going to guarantee that they seal right, first of all. And then again, it's, it's also going to put a, a second dose of sterilization upon the bottom. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take off the chef hat for a little while. And Don, I hope you, you don't mind. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'll just leave we'll it. We'll just put it right on the side. Right. I, I'll just leave it right there. We'll, we'll still leave it there so that everybody will know what's going on. But anyway, the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to uh, get get our canner ready. And and this is, uh, we'll, use, we'll use the water in here and we'll use these, this pot here. To, so we'll, we'll make sure that we have all sizes make sure that everybody's covered. So the water is just not in the pan, it's also in the jar. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, you, you, wanna, you wanna make sure that these jars are covered, open and, and covered at least by an inch, two inches above the rim when you, when you place them into the, into the canner. We call this a canner. Like I said, mine is a homemade canner. You can buy these uh, at, at Walmart, a little bit of every place they, they sell these, um, a, a canner. But however, when I first got into this, I ended up using just a big pot. So, yeah, it's a nice yeah, stock pot. It's, right, so I, I just use a big pot. Basically, that's what a canner is, but it will come with the top on it. Now. That's how we sterilize the jars. Now, there's also another part that's going to go along with that, and that is the lids. The lids have to be sterilized also. This is what we use to seal the jars, is the lids. The lids, as you can see, has like a, a, a rubber band that's on the inside of them that goes around on the inside. When you place this on a jar, what happens is it forms an airtight seal. It, it forms an airtight seal, uh, and because of this, it won't let any air in, and that's vital. If these things do not seal to where it doesn't punch in and out when it's on the jar, 
if it doesn't, if it's still popping up and down like this after the jar cools, then chances are it did not seal properly. What you should do with that one is put that one in the refrigerator and use it within the next week. So whenever you use one of these lids, you don't want to reuse it. Even if it seals and what have you, once you open it up, they're, they're cheap. They only cost a dollar and something for a dozen or something like that. You can always reuse, you can reuse the bands and this is what holds the lid down on the jar. And until that seal is broke, this basically is sterilized and it's all good. First thing that we want to do is we want to wash these. These are beautiful, beautiful wild grapes here. That I help pick. Ooh. That's it. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. So what we want to do first is we want to rinse these. Shake these down. Make sure everything is nice and level. Mm -hmm. You want to bring the water probably just about even with the grapes themselves. So we have reached a, a rolling boil. I'm using a potato masher to mash out the remaining juices within those wild grapes. And what we're going to do now is we're going to separate the juice from the skins and the seeds because that's, that's what's most important when we're making jelly. We want to use the juice, period. The juice. We don't so, want skins and seeds, especially seeds might break your teeth or something. Yeah, you so I don't, I don't, you, I don't make wild grape jam. That would be where as you use the meat and what have you from from the uh, fruit in, in itself. I don't use that for that. I always use it for jelly. Okay. And, and as you can see, that we have reached a real nice boil. Most of those, if they haven't burst on their own, then I've given. Just a little bit of help. Well, you're doing a right. fantastic a job. Help. Now, we're, 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 doing the, um, we're doing the juice, but okay. to that juice, there are things that we need to add. Okay. Four, four level, four cups. Four level, and I gotta be precise. Exactly. One quarter cup of what? lemon juice. One quarter cup of lemon juice. Of lemon juice, exactly. One quarter cup of water. Okay. And once again, I'm using sterilized water to do this part. Okay. Two. <laughs> How many cups do I have here? I believe that that would be four. Somebody put up fingers. I think it is four. And it's level. Exactly. Okay. So we got four level cups of sugar. Okay. Four level okay. cups of sugar. Okay. Um, there are two types of pectin that you can use. Now, pectin is a is a natural fruit element, and it and what it does is it causes fruits to gel. Okay. okay. Um, there are two different kinds that you can use. I always use the low or the no sugar type. Six tablespoons. Okay. Okay. Because once this reaches a boil, but you see that how it's starting to jam? Yes, beautiful. Look at that. Oh, really? That's yeah. like jelly. That's yep, sweet. already. See that? It's starting to gel already. So we're going to get that as close to a boil. Now I'm going to keep an eye on this to okay. make sure that, that because if it starts setting up too much, I want to hurry up and start jarring these. Now, and as you can see also, those jars have reached a boil almost at, at, at the perfect optimum, optimum time. I see. And that's what we're looking for. We want these deals to almost come together and, and, and come together and be ready simultaneously. You want to go to about a quarter inch from the top. Okay. Not really any closer, any further than that. That's maybe about a quarter inch right there. 
Okay. Okay. And what I do at this point is I just throw in a few tops or lids and I use a telescopic magnet to get those out of the water. They only need to stay in there a few seconds or what have you, only putting them in there long enough for that little band oh. to soften up. You don't want to leave it in there too long. Yeah, because it's rubber. Right, and then you're going to use a band. Oh, once the lids pop. You and can they take the bands off. So exactly. the lids are supposed to pop while it's hot? It, as it cools down, it's, it's going to form a suction. And it's going to, when it pops, is what it's doing is it's, it's forming a suction and it's sucking that lid down so that that lid stays in place. And it forms an airtight seal. No bacteria, nothing to get in there now. Ah, this is my favorite part of the show. And she's tasting that warm yet, but. Mm, oh. Oh my Jesus gracious <laughs> Lord. And Mary too. Yeah. <laughs> All gone. That is yummy. You know, they have a thing in our family called scraping the pot. <laughs> <laughs> you could definitely scrape that pot, I believe or that. Or licking the bowl. Yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely believe oh, that. That is so good. Yummy, yummy. You have done a wonderful job. Mine, mine, mine. And look at all of that that it made. This is beautiful. And we can still get more. We can still get another Absolutely. little jar. Yeah, well, about a half, yeah. You may even get a whole. Yeah, jar let's get another let's, jar. Let's try it. Save this jelly let's jar. Let's see what we can get out. I would not yeah. be putting this in the water. Because I always put that off to the side. The PA resistance, and, the, and it's still warm. And we've heard a couple of the tops pop. Mm -hmm. Which means that they are setting well. They have set, right, they have sealed. And, and here, they have formed the airtight seal. Okay. And here, mm, the strawberries in. <laughs> I saw that wrinkle in your brow because you know it's good, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I think so. <laughs> yes. That is delicious. Mm, mm, mm. And I hear you got another special treat for us. Oh, yes, I do. This is mulberry syrup. Oh, from the mulberry bush. From the mulberry, I yep. I mulberry bush today. So, yeah, <laughs> this is mulberry syrup. Mm -hmm. I made this a few months ago. Okay. But, um. What are we going to do with it? We're going to put this on some <laughs> ice cream. I was going to say, I can take we're it gonna, to my yeah, house. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to put it on some ice cream. Oh, and uh, pancakes, we're going to put some that? nuts on there. And we're gonna see how much you like. Ooh, good. Mm -hmm. You know what this tastes like? You know those drumsticks you buy in the store with the peanuts on top? Mm. Well, folks. Join me again next time, and Brian will definitely be back. Bon appetit, let's eat. Let's eat. You're cooking with Terry. And my friend Brian. No, oh, this is so good. So I'm, I'm glad you like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess you better give us your song. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go.